What, what, but obviously you know what you're doing, but then to just see that like really written down and see those type of stats, like, what, like that's got to even impress yourself, right? Like to see, see that what you've been able to accomplish in these last ten years. Yeah, I mean, usually when it's what you know, when when people start to put it in your face, when it's one of these moments like the turn of a decade or something, is when you really start to sort of see it more and realize it. Um, I never let myself get too, too, too invested in the in the lows or the highs. <laughs> it's like. No, nah, it it's 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 great, man. It, it's um, you know, it's 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 everything I always wanted. It's 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 what I work tirelessly for and, um, and relentlessly, you know, just constantly trying to, you know, create, stay, stay refreshing, stay consistent. You know, yeah. learning the right amount of time to take off. But yeah. you know, but ten years ago, did you ever anticipate having a run like this? Um, I think I had like. I think I had things in my mind that I wanted to accomplish. Um, I think I had the utmost faith in myself and a lot of confidence in myself. I don't necessarily know if I ever s saw it going like this far, but also, you know, as you uh, receive things in life, money, blessings, whatever, your appetite begins to grow, right? So it's like if I give you a million dollars tomorrow, um, you're gonna learn what it's like to have a million dollars and then you're gonna start being around people that have $10 million or $100 million. Yeah. You're gonna learn that there's other things that you can't get with a million dollars. So, you know, your, 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 appetite, your appetite grows and I think the initial visions that I had for myself just kind yeah. of manifested into all What were those goals then at that time? Um, I think when I first started out, I just wanted to be uh, just as important as Lil Wayne because I felt like nobody was ever going to be as big as Lil Wayne uh, like during lo like Lollipop times and obviously yeah. like Carter Three times and, you know I just never seen rap be that uh, it just was such it was like this bright flashball like I just never seen it look so massive and so big <laughs> and remember yeah. like I'm on tour with the guy so yeah. I'm, I'm at his shows and you know, I'm watching it, all, everything, like, you know, I'm, and by the way, I, I don't think that anybody, like, ever in music from now and before and the future, I don't know if there'll ever be anybody that will work harder than that guy. So that was a big, mm -hmm. a big thing that I paid attention to as well, was just, like, he has the most insane work ethic. And I see, like, a lot of glimpses of that in, like, guys like Future, Thug, mm -hmm. guys that really stay in there, yeah. and they're, like, again, Living relentless, the like, yeah, but, like, man, there was nothing like Wayne. Like, I used to watch Wayne cut, like, four or five classics in a night, like, joints that, like, would just go on to be like, it would, it would be mind blowing. You know, he'd get four verses off and then, and then like two months later, or three months later, those songs would, would come out and be like, I can't believe this is like, you know, make it rain or like, you know, like whatever. <laughs> right. Right. Uh, Shout out uh, yeah. So, um, but, but anyway, yeah, I think initially my goal, my goal was, was just to, to be uh, a protege that didn't flop. You know, I just wanted mm. to be somebody that was like remotely as important as my mentor. Um, and yeah, from there, you know, I think a lot of things changed when, when Wayne went to jail um, yeah. because it was really a moment of realization, like, all right, this guy pretty much put all his trust and, and all his like power behind us. And now like it's on our shoulders to like make sure that when he comes home, you know, it's kind of like the same thing. Like if your man goes in and does a bid and you guys are doing a thing together, you want to make sure that when he comes out, you come pick him up in a nice right. car yeah. and say, yo, here, you know, so it was, it was it was that type of responsibility where it's like, yo, when my when my guy comes home, I just want to make sure that this thing is bigger than where, where, where it was when we left off. Um, well, yeah, once people started, I mean, once people started sharing the tape, like at the time, you know, back back in those days, yeah. um, it really had to spread from word of mouth. Right. You know, it, it really, you know, it was it was still people playing the CD in their car, and it was that whole "Who is this?" moment, which is, by the way, the best moment for any artist in music. You know, you don't today. It's still yeah, fresh. don't ever, don't ever not like just be present in your "Who is this?" moment because you're gonna be chasing that "Who is this?" moment for the rest of your career, wow. trying to keep people as interested as they were when they felt like they were one of the only people listening to you. So if they were gifted the music from a friend just by being in the same car and now they've taken So Far Gone with them back to their mm -hmm. school or their neighborhood and they started, you know, share, that was, that was the beauty of back in the day right. when it, 
when it wasn't like, you know, so readily accessible and new stuff dropping every day. And, and you know, still I think there are people who scour uh, all platforms to find that next yeah. wave and that next sound, and I still get joy out of getting new music from friends of mine or sharing. Discovery, discovery. Yeah, but but your yeah, who is this moment is a big moment. So for for all new artists, please be present in that moment because it it does escape you, and you'll be trying to get it back forever. Yeah, and I also f feel often that um, that things that I repetitively think about or say, I'm able to manifest. Like, you know, this house, for example, I manifested this because I obsessively used to take my uncle's Audi and I used to take a girl to Young and Eglinton, Silver City to the movies and then to Pickle Barrel for, for dinner because that was, you know, what I could afford. Real Toronto yeah. shit that everybody's going to be excited you about. You know, chicken fingers and fries, yeah. you know. <laughs> that was what soda and nuggets. So she Straight. was a special young <laughs> Straight, and then I used to go tell her like, yo, you want to go see where I'm going to live one day. Yeah. Because mm. this is where I'm going to live one day. And I, my uncle had the Audi drop, and I used to drive these same three streets right here. That used to be my route right there. I used to come down down Park Lane where we're at, then back back to Post Road, and then back Bridal Path. And I used to, and Prince used to live around here. Oh, wow. wow. So I used, to, I used to pretend like I knew which one Prince's <laughs> house was. Every night I'd pick a different house. Yeah. Say, oh, that's Prince's <laughs> house. <laughs> um, but yeah, I just, I, 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 strong, I, I truly believe, you know, a lot of those things I, I said, they may not have been the case yeah, at the time, yeah. but I did believe that they were possible. Also, I'm pretty sure being from Canada was some pressure, you know, coming out of Toronto. I saw in a previous interview with Complex, like in 2009, you said like the city is known for hate and he never really had that icon, but you know, like a hometown hero, but now you're the guy. Like, how does that feel, you know, look, being looked on as that person? <clears throat> um, I think, I think that it's just probably the most important, probably the most important achievement of mine, mm -hmm. which would just be um, you, like, well, there's a few layers to it. So it would be um, giving, giving the city an identity right. um, at a time where, you know, I remember we, like, a lot of my friends and stuff used to speak with like fake American accents <laughs> or like, be, or like, you know, if they went I'm and spent like, York. if they went and spent like a summer in like Buffalo, they'd be like, yeah, I'm from New York, son. You <laughs> know, yeah, right? Yo, like, fuck <laughs> Toronto, man. You know, I'm from, I'm from Detroit. And they'd go yeah. to like Windsor for the night and shit. <laughs> but like, um, yeah, it was just a different time. Nobody was really proud to be from, from here. Um, within the music scene, like, it used to be called the Screwface Capital. We just had this thing where, like, I don't know, we just wanted to... I think, I think everyone was just waiting and being like, yo, will it, will it ever happen, you know? Um, and, and so you get a bunch of people kind of just competing at the same level for the same shows and the same radio spots and stuff, and it breeds a lot of headbutting. Um, and, yeah, I think, I think as we as we started to rise, um, the biggest thing and the most important thing was that everyone else got to see that it was possible. Because at the time, the pitch was far-fetched. Like, okay, so you're telling me this Canadian Jew child actor is gonna be what? Is gonna be like someone that we say is in our top five, top 10, whatever. <laughs> It's like, it was, it was a hard sell. Yeah. And I think that it took, it took me probably being the furthest candidate and, and, and making it happen for everybody else just to realize like, you know, it's like, even with like, man, all these guys, like you, you look at the footage of Abel downtown Toronto singing, you know, back when he was just roaming the, roaming the streets and, you know, and just up to no good, but just had raw <laughs> talent. And, you know, Tory Lanez who used to be like outside like shopping malls trying to battle people and shit. Like, you know, all these people had drive um, and, and all these people had, had talent. And I think that just the, 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 the realization that it's possible was extremely important. Uh, I don't credit myself for anything other than that. I don't credit myself for uh, just opening that, that next chapter in everyone's minds where it's like, all right, like if, if this person can do this, I can do this too. That's the only thing I ever want to take credit for when it comes to 
you know, when it comes to whatever, whatever, the, whatever impact I had on other artists from the city, because I truly believe that all these people deserve to be where they're at, and you know, um, probably would have found their way. But I think that that moment was a turning point for everybody. Like, yo, this is crazy, and like, I gotta get, like, I, I know I can get there too. So that was, that was, that was big. I never would have, like, I never could have told you a week before that that God's plan was my single and it was gonna be the biggest song of my career. I never would have known that. I, I, my hand just got forced. And it is truly, you know, I, I do feel as though I, like, I, I can put in the maximum amount of effort. I can use all my heart and my soul, you know, in my writing. But at the end of the day, I am being guided by some other power. I don't know what it is, but somebody likes me somewhere, <laughs> you know? And it's just, that's just the facts, you know? Like, I, I, a lot of this is organic. It's not that, it's not that calculated. Um,